everybody, Rev here. A few things before we get into the episode this week. Uh, Kim and I have been doing listen-throughs of the very first season. Uh, we started with episode one and we just kind of did it as a celebration for our three-year anniversary. Uh, and then a lot of people in the chat said they would like to see us do some more of it, so we decided to do the first story arc. And then we'll kind of judge from there if we're going to continue on with it. Uh, but if you missed those and you'd like to check them out, you can head over to youtube.com slash the crit show. Uh, and basically, they're like an hour and a half, two hour long episodes uh, that is us listening through to an episode and then kind of doing director's commentary. Uh, I'm telling some stories from behind the scenes. People are asking questions uh, and we're just kind of reminiscing about things and talking about how uh, things have changed and how we changed our play style and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it has been a lot of fun. We've had a lot of people show up for them asking some great questions. Uh, so we'll be doing that at least up until episode six. Uh, and if you'd like to join us when we do them live, you can make sure to follow us on Twitch. Uh, and as for whether it's going to be Tuesday or Saturday, uh, you can always follow us on Facebook or Twitter uh, and get notifications for when we are getting ready to go live that day. And with that, on to the episode. All right, we are back in the small town of Turnpike with Capo, Patience, Astrid, and Stan having spent the night in the Drowned Toad after an eventful afternoon of saving what seems to be a polymorphed wizard from a pack of polymorphed guards who are intent on capturing the wizard sheep Shinebright and taking him back to their master, Noak. Shinebright let you all know that Noak is living inside of his old tower, but it seems to now be surrounded by a small pop-up town of people who worship or work for or want to study with Noak. You all decided to go and try to get this wand back so that Shinebright can become his normal self again. What are you doing before you leave? Definitely need to stock up on some healing potions. Yeah. You know, when I made these characters for you all, I, I got the surveys done. I went through, I made the characters. I gave you each a couple of special items. Other than that, I gave you nothing. So assume that you have some money and let me know what you'd like to get. You have, you know, an appropriate amount of money for someone who is fourth level. What is a healing potion? Like 50 gold? Yeah, healing potion is 50. A, a, base, a basic potion of healing is 50 gold. What is the standard like when you, I don't know if D&D has this the way Pathfinder does, is like, oh, if you're starting a character at this level, roll these dice and that's how much gold you have. There is like amounts that you roll depending on your class. Um, but then uh, s starting gold by levels more than one, it says that character level first through fourth is still normal starting equipment and gold, which sounds low to me because for me it's like, 2d4 times 10 gold pieces. What's the fifth level one? 500 gold pieces plus 1d10 slash 25 gold pieces. Okay, let's do that. And I will roll a d10 with you and you can have whichever one is higher. So that's 200 for me. 100 bucks. 200 for me. 75. I'm a monk. That makes sense. Yeah, okay. I, I also rolled a three, so 75. Cool. I'll take it. Okay. I'll take yours. You'll take mine, yeah. And just to clarify, that is... 500 gold plus whatever it was you rolled. So it's not just 75 gold. It's 575 okay, gold. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So what did everybody get? Oh, man. I just got a bunch of healing potions. I got three potions of greater healing and then two standard potions of healing. I did the opposite of that because of my fundage. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I did, with my 600 gold, two greater and four standard. Uh, I did two and two. All right, so what is the game plan? I imagine you all sitting down inside of the lobby of the Drowned Toad eating breakfast. Well, I'd have to imagine that since Stan and I knew of Noak, we would know where his town in the forest is or where his sort of settlement is. So I think we're just sort of going over like a map of the area and pointing out where uh, Noak should be. Yeah, and I think any map that you would have is kind of what Shinebright had originally described, that there is a central tower and then two smaller towers and then a couple of little huts around it. But any map that you have does not have the what we'll call the Noak encampment around it. You might be able to find someone who has knowledge of that area. Uh, but you would not be able to find it at least readily on any maps. 
Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, what do we think there? Uh, we try to try to get the main location, and I don't know. Do we want to try to sneak our way towards this tower? Maybe I could poke around, find us a good path in, come back and get you. Yeah, we could do that. We could also try to see if we could find someone who maybe knows a little more about the encampment. Could maybe let us know what to expect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Even if the people who live in the encampment aren't willing to help us take any action against it, they might be, well, they might be willing to brag about the things that they've seen this note guy do. Yeah, because what's the plan once we get inside? Like, is it, uh, are we just going to, like, walk in and try to try to kill this dude? Because he sounds like he's a pretty fucking powerful wizard, and I don't really like our odds. We almost lost to, like, three dogs and a bear in a trench coat, which sounds like a punchline or or a setup, but was in fact just our very real, very dangerous afternoon. Capo, Astrid, you two are both pretty charming. I suppose you could try to talk him out of the wand, but I don't like our odds on that. Yeah, I mean, I'll do my best, but I'd love to not rely on that. So are we thinking we're just going to square up for a fight or? That is what I do best. I'll play the drum. Charming folks works really well when it goes right, but when it goes wrong, man, we better have a good plan for how we're going to fight this guy. Do we assume we'll have to uh, take him out before we get the wand? Well, if he keeps it on his person like this last guy did. Yeah, that's fair. That's a shame. We can't snag it and turn him into a, you know, a frog or something. I mean, maybe. I suppose with a deft enough maneuver, you could take anything from anyone. Unless he keeps it in his person. Oh. Ew. Oh. And I don't know necessarily what that means or what form it takes, but, you know, like... Honest person seems doable, but in his person doesn't. I mean, that sounds very secure to have it on your person, but that's what Shine Bright did. Kept it on his person, went to sleep with it even, and it was taken right off of him. So maybe this guy is taking a different maneuver and keeps it locked away somewhere. So maybe, I don't know, one of us can disguise as like a one of his guards or, you know, somebody on his crew and at least get inside, get a look around. You think that's something you could do, Stan? Yeah, I mean, bad comes to worse. Nobody ever really pays attention to the guy with the broom. Right, I've also got a disguise kit, so I might be able to k- kind of hook you up, make you look a little bit even more innocuous. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all right, so maybe we just make our way there, try and sneak in, get close, and then uh, the rest stand up, let them do some recon, and come up with a further plan from there. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I love it. Let's go. All right, so you finish up your breakfast and head out of the Drowned Toad. You all head down the road and out of the town of Turnpike towards the forest. Uh, who is leading this trek to Shine Bright's old tower. I sure can be. I have an okay survival. Mine's very middling. I know nothing about this place and my survival is shit. <laughs> uh, really, all I want to know is which one of you is rolling survival to get you there. I volunteer. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I got an 11, which isn't terrible, but is also not what one would call good. Can I try to assist in any way? Uh, yeah, you could assist him since you also know the area, so you can roll that again. Stan and take the higher of the two. Okay. No, I'm going same die. Fuck. Ten. Oh, good. <laughs> so Stan starts to lead you all through the woods. And after about 20 minutes, you start to hear the sounds of people shouting for help. Hey, you guys hear that? Sure do. Yeah. Where's it coming from? Uh, it is coming a little further from the east. Does that track with where I know Noak's settlement to be? It does not. You feel like you may have drifted off course a little bit here. Huh. I'll just start heading that way. Okay. Yeah, same. Oh, hey, uh, this the other... Oh, you're going to... Okay, all right. Yeah, I guess they they sound bad. I'll help with that, and I'll follow. All right, so you all start to head in the direction of these screams. And as you approach, you start to hear the sound of quickly running water. You step out of the forest, and in front of you is a large river. And you can see that there is a bridge going across it, and the bridge is starting to break. You can hear it creaking. You can see the boards bending, and there is a fairly large wagon on it. And at least two or three families worth of people helping escort this across. This is going to be a skills challenge. So what I'm going to ask you to do is pick a skill, and no one can use the same skill. If you do, it will become a more difficult check. But you're narratively going to describe to me how you're using these skills to make this situation better, to save these people, to stabilize the bridge, whatever. Uh, And as a reminder, we did do one of these in the Neverland one-shot. Nine successes finishes the event. Three fails 
and the event ends much differently. As a reminder, if you have a spell that would be useful, you can use a spell slot, and it is an auto-success on one of these checks. Okay. And Rev, just for us, do we know the target number that we are trying to do, or does it depend on what we say we're doing? Yes, it depends on what you say you're doing. Cool. I want to run up and much like Jean Valjean and Les Mis, I want to try to lift that wagon and try to push it off of the bridge a little faster. All right. So I assume that you're going for a athletics. I am. Okay. 22. Oh, yes, that is a success. So we have patience grabbing a hold of the back of the wagon and lifting it, trying to get it to not bump as harshly on these slowly bending planks. I think I am running up to to the people that are there and I am trying to persuade them to not bring as much with them things that would slow them down and get to safety in the most efficient way as possible. Okay, so you're trying to convince them to leave stuff behind and just them get off of the bridge. Yeah. All right, so uh, what is this? Is this a persuasion? It sure is. Let's see it. 11. Yeah, you start talking to them, trying to convince them that, oh, no, you must leave some stuff behind. They're like, we have to get across this bridge and we have to make it to Turnpike so we can sell our bumper crop of pumpkins that came up this year. Oh, no. That's why the wagon is so heavy. We weren't expecting it. But there were so many more pumpkins. Uh, I'm going to start drumming to try and create like a, a work rhythm, like to keep everybody on task moving together at the same pace. Uh, is this performance? Hell yeah. Okay. Fuck ass. Nine. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, just for those keeping track at home, we are at two fails, one success, nine successes, completes, as does three fails. <laughs> Rip these people. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we are to Stan. You are the only one that has not taken an action yet. What are you up to? Uh, I think that I am hopping and skipping from plank to plank, the ones that I can tell are sturdy. And as I'm going, I'm grabbing anybody small, like if there are kids or halflings or whatever, so that I'm essentially cartwheeling them to the to the edge and hucking them to safety. Okay, so acrobatics. Is that I'll, what this is? I'll take it, yeah. Okay. Ooh, 25. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. You are able to grab a hold of a number of the small children, and you get them to the far side of the bridge. I think we're back around to patience. Okay. I want to clang the blunt side of my great axe against like the side of the cart and sort of shout for everyone to pick up and hustle off of this bridge. Can I sell you on using intimidation, but with my strength stat? Uh, yeah. Let's see it. That is a 17. Yeah, that is a success. You slam your great axe against the side of the cart and you start to shout and the group gets startled and they start dropping things and moving quicker off of the bridge. Astrid. All right. I tried persuading these people um, and that didn't work. So now I'm just going to lie to them <laughs> and and tell them that um, this bridge is about to collapse any second and that there are creatures in this water that will eat them instantly. All right. That's not a lie. No, oh, no. Um, <laughs> I get off the bridge. <laughs> I leave them to their fate. All right. Roll deception. It's the same roll as last time. Oh, That's no. That's an 11. Oh, no. I had a plus five on both of these. So as you are all on the bridge trying to get these multiple families and this cart filled to the brim with pumpkins off of the bridge, I think that Capo and Stan hear the twang of these two ropes going across the river break. And the families, Patience, Astrid, the wagon full of pumpkins, drop down into the river and are starting to be swept away. Oh, well, that's not ideal. I can't fucking... T I, I turn Stan invisible. Like, I can't fucking do <laughs> anything. <laughs> we turn invisible so no one can prove we were here. We, <laughs> <laughs> we get the fuck we out of leave. here. We go back to... Turnpike, and we pretend this never happened. <laughs> we go to see if Noak is looking for any new guards. <laughs> we change our names. We move away. I'm gonna start running along the bank of the river. Is it like like how much of a drop was this? Uh, probably like ten feet. So not horrible, but jarring. I guess I'll start running along the bank, trying to follow the current, and like find a place where there's maybe a down tree that I could try and shove into the water or, you know, anything I can get out there to stop them from being swept away or to help them to the banks. All right, roll perception to see if you can find either a tree that is knocked over or one that maybe could be knocked over. Seven. 
So as you start to run and you look around in the forest, you do not see any sign of any either downed trees or trees you think that you could easily knock over. Everything here looks pretty sturdy since it is so close to the source of water. It's getting lots to drink and real strong. <laughs> Stan, I can't find a fucking thing to put in the water. I'm trying to find something to help him grab onto, but I got nothing. And I'm not a strong man or a strong swimmer. Short limbs. Or a strong drummer. Fuck you. <laughs> so as we're jogging along, can I activate my ring of jumping, mm -hmm. which I believe gives me 36 feet of long jump? Yes, with only five feet of, <laughs> of wind-up room. Yeah. Nice. And jump out onto the wagon and see if I can get somebody up over my shoulders and jump back or at least try to get to the shallows enough that I can <laughs> attempt to do this back and forth and at least give them a chance. And this spell lasts for a minute. Yes. Uh, so here's what I'm going to say. There are eight people in the river, not counting Astrid and Patience. So 10 total, jumping out, picking someone up and jumping back. I assume that you're jumping like onto the floating cart. Yeah. I think you could do this five times total. Six seconds there, pick someone up, six seconds back. So you could get five of these eight people. Um, and I think what it's going to be, uh, instead of having you roll a, a bunch of different rolls, we're going to do two rolls. Okay. Uh, one is going to be an acrobatics to make sure that you are landing on the cart and back on the shore. And the other one's going to be an athletics to pick someone up and hold on to them as you jump them across the river. I am down. All right. Let's see these two rolls. Important question. Which five people are you saving? <laughs> oh, there's my God. Uh, there's three women, four men. Should no. I name them too? No. Yeah. Can you name them and give and give us like a, a rundown on like their personalities? Yeah. Like their yeah. their like I, hopes and dreams. Yeah, the eldest one is named Elmer. Uh, and he I don't need more on my conscience here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I killed them. Let's just let, yeah, let yeah. them be nameless. Um all right. I wanna I wanna help Stan out. Can I aid on the basically the jumping back, navigating a person by like being ready on the banks to like grab onto them. Like, you know, if it seems like the jump's going to come up short, just trying to help drag them ashore and stuff as we go. Yeah. So to help on that athletics role. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then as far as the jump there, I think I, I have to use bardic inspiration. I don't think there's any way I can like materially help, but I can magically help. Okay. I feel like I could maybe assist on the strength check if I'm in the water and trying to sort of grab people and try to pass them to Stan. Narratively, do you want to be doing that or do you want to be focusing on the other three people? I didn't know if this was happening first and then we were acting. No, because this will be essentially 10 rounds of him. So you guys will kind of be going at the same time. So in this 10 rounds, if I was trying to grab people and swim them to shore, how many how many times do you think I could do that? What is your movement speed? 30. Can I sell you on using my rope to somehow take multiple people on one trip? Yeah. I mean, that was kind of my idea as well as to use my rope to help you get these people together and then dip. Sure. Tell me about it. Okay. Between the two of us, I would try to see if I could rope up the remaining three people and sort of tow them to the to the side of the riverbank. Uh, yeah. So I think that for that, it would essentially be two athletics checks, one to get everybody tied up into the ropes uh, and the other one to pull them to shore. Tass, give me an athletics with advantage and then a acrobatics with bardic inspiration. Uh, so add a, add a five to your, your jump there roll. Okay. Holy shit. Um... All together, that's a 12. Oh. I rolled my. a one plus six plus five. I actually think that that's probably good enough to hit a wagon. Like you're jumping out to the water, trying to land on like an eight foot wide and long wagon. I don't think that's an overly difficult target for that. I will accept your ruling. <laughs> yeah, and you know thank what? you. DM, that does sound reasonable. You're yeah. so wise. And then for the. Athletics check, you'll get advantage on this one. All right. So I start picking these people up and then seeing what happens. That's a 14. Yes. So you are able to get these five people back and forth. It's not pretty. Like when you're jumping back, you're kind of slamming yourselves, them a little bit into like the mud and the lip. Uh, even as you go back out, like you're clipping your chest on the wagon. I think as you go back and forth all these times, 
you take five points of damage total, kind of just one point jostling yourself as you hit rocks on the riverbed and slam into the floating wagon. Patience, give me your two athletics checks with advantage since Astrid is helping out. Great. So that first one is a 23 to rope people up. And then it's a 24 to swim them to shore. Nice. I love you. 18 and 19. (laughs) Yeah, so the two of you are able to drag these three remaining folks in the river out of the river. And as you are all laying sprawled out on the edge of the river, covered in mud, soaking wet, smelling like fish with a little bit of pumpkin mixed in. Delicious. It's my favorite soup. You see the (laughs) wet... Pumpkin and the haddock. You see the wagon continuing with its load of pumpkins that have spilled out into the river and the families all sigh a heavy sigh together as we see the pumpkins and the cart go over a waterfall you're welcome uh let's go (laughs) thank you yeah yeah no problem sorry about the pumpkins yes it was a bumper crop yeah oh hey all your kids were left unattended back at the broken bridge oh the children thank you we will Make sure to go retrieve them. Um, we need to find another bridge to, to get home, see if we can find anything else to bring to town to sell. Someone really should check the infrastructure of those bridges. Where do you come from? Uh, we come from Middleton. Oh, okay. That's not the name of something around uh, that Wizard Noakes place, is it? Uh, No. Okay. Do you know where that is? Kind of. We have sold pumpkins at, at the Noak encampment before. It's um, uh, You're very far east for that. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. We're east, so we have to go west from here, northwest, southwest. More west, yes. Yeah, more of a more of a northwest. North northwest. Okay. All right. Well, good luck. Thanks. All right. So now, who's leading the way? Uh, me. Okay. Sorry, I'm so sorry, Stan. You've <laughs> lost your privileges. <laughs> Three. Yeah, I would certainly be helping you out by being like, "Well, don't don't head this way because that's where I was going, and I guess we're east, and uh, you know, I'd want to make sure." Oh, good, because that's a 21 now. Ooh, okay, thank God. All right, so you are able to get everyone back on track, headed towards the northwest. You travel for another 45 minutes, and you start to see signs of smoke in the forest. Like, what kind of smoke? Campfire, chimney, wildfire? Pipe. Pipe smoke. Uh, Roll investigate. 10? It doesn't seem like wildfire smoke. Okay. And it doesn't seem like pipe smoke. Somewhere in between there. Yeah. Somewhere in between. But you do see the direction it's coming from, and it's directly ahead of you, maybe another 10 minutes. On course for Noakes, as far as we know? Yes. Okay. I think this might be our settlement. How far out would we expect we are from Noakes now? Like, would this hold water? Like, that smoke might be from there? You would think that from what you know of Noakes Tower, that you're probably like 20 minutes away. But if they have built a little surrounding area, then yeah, that seems to match up. Okay. All right, well... Do we want to try and go get a look first, uh, or do we just want to send somebody in from here? I mean, again, I've got a disguise kit. I do have glamoured armor, so like, you know, I could my outfit at least could be very convincing. Or I guess, well, no, it's not going to fit you, Stan. I'm sorry. No, I mean, you know, that's okay. I guess, uh, like you or Astrid, even if you just kind of wander into the settlement, like you do kind of magic-y things, right? I mean, it seems like a bunch of people from all over come here, so... We could always just be new arrivals. Yeah. Oh, all right. So we just approach normally and with like some deference. Yeah. Only thing I'm worried about is if those wolves that ran off came back and- and Oh, yeah. They're going to smell us. That's a good call. Oh, right. I'm going to try and move forward far enough to get eyes on a person. Okay. I want to just see if like, I want to get up there and see if like everybody in this town, like once they get there, they all seem to wear the same robes or anything like that. Are you just- Walking up there? Are you trying to sneak up there? I'm going to try and sneak up there. I'm going to do my best. All right. Give me a stealth. Uh, that's a 10. Of course it is. As you sneak your way up towards this encampment, you can see that there is a pretty large wall around it, about 15 feet tall, and there are doors, a big set of double doors that dip down just a little bit. They're about 12 feet high. And as you duck behind one of the trees, you see an enormous hand wrap on top of the door and push it open. And out comes loping an enormous ape. And it sniffs in your direction and sits down and rests its hand on its leg and its hand on its chin and just stares at the tree you're behind. 
<sighs> I agree. <laughs> you raise a fine point. We're new visitors. May uh, may we enter? Of course, by we, I mean me alone. May we come in? May I come in to fuck? I turn around and run away. <laughs> As you turn to run away. The handful of dice he just rolled. Oh, my gosh. You hear the sound of very quick movement. And then for a brief second, there is a shadow over you. And then a huge stone slams into the back of your head. And you take 26 points of damage. (gasps) And you hear the sound of that ape beating his chest and screaming into the air as you run away. And give me a deck save to see if you stay on your feet as this hits you. I don't. Okay. You go tumbling to the ground. Uh, you sprawl out and your drum rolls a couple feet away from you. I think I fucking play. I possum for a little bit here. I'm going to wait. I'm going to let this thing think that it killed me maybe for a second and see if it starts approaching. After a couple of moments, you do start to hear footsteps in your direction and you hear <laughs> and you feel hot breath on your neck as it sniffs you <laughs> and it pokes you. What are you doing? Man, I'm playing dead for sure. Uh, Give me a performance check. Oh, God. Come on. Come on. 16. It nudges you a couple more times and then gives out a huff. (sighs) And you hear its footfalls retreating as it heads back towards the gate. And then after 30, 40 seconds, you hear the sound of the gate clicking closed as it shuts the door behind it. I try and get to my feet and collect my drum and drag my shitty broken body back to the rest of the party so what were you all doing while he was sneaking ahead he's scouting so we're just kind of waiting for the information and we don't really know what to plan ahead here until we know what we're going to face yeah just kind of waiting and making sure to sort of keep an eye and an ear out in case we see or hear anything but i think we trusted capo to go yeah you've been waiting for him about four minutes And then you hear the sound of his return and he steps into the clearing on the side of the woods where you are all kind of huddled down for the moment. And he is in rough shape. There is blood coming out of his nose uh, and he's just covered in dirt. It looks like he tried to slide into home plate. Whoa, what happened? A big fucking gorilla, like really big, like as tall as the walls, like 15 foot. Fuck off, gorilla. So not the most welcoming of communities. Maybe if I hadn't tried to run away, I don't know. I, I was talking to it, and I was talking. Oh, I, I panicked. I did a bad job, and but it was still listening, at least. But as soon as I started to run, it hit me with a rock. Oh, man. That's no good. Did it look... Uh, I don't know if you got a good look at, at its eyes. Did it seem like what was up with the wolves? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was just a, another polymorphed guard. It was definitely, you know, talking just in gorilla talk. I couldn't understand it, but it was making all sort of the same pattern of grunts and huffs like it was words. Well, we can always try to circle around the long way and see if there's something else we can do or uh, take another look at that gate. I don't know what you all think. I mean, I'm always down to fight a giant ape, but uh, looks like it fucked you up pretty good. Well, in my defense, I'm not always down to fight a giant ape. I'm down to play the drums, so... Sneaking up to the gate might have gone okay, but fighting the gorilla is not in my wheelhouse. And then there's the question of, do we fight it and defeat it and make our way in, or do we get past it and hope that it doesn't follow us in? Do we try to go over the wall somewhere else? What kind of defenses are there? I think maybe we should try to find another way to sneak ourselves in, get past that ape. All right, well, I can go take a look this time. Be careful. Yeah, all right. And I think I'll try to circle wide, like I I know the direction he went and came from. So I want to head more northerly, um, like up and around and and see once I get the wall in view, if there are any other entrances or um, if it's all just wall. And I think the same question for you. Are you pretty blatant about this or are you trying to sneak? Oh, definitely being sneaky. All right. Roll me a stealth. 17. All right, so you are able to get up pretty close to the wall and start to make your way around. This takes a while. You're probably gone three hours as you go around the outskirts of this. You don't see any other entrances as you go, um, but you are able, once you get towards the back half, to see the tallest tower, which you know would be Shine Bright's tower. You can barely see the tops of a couple other towers because he said he had three, um, but it's 
a pretty good distance in from this wall, but this is really the only wall uh, from which you can make it out. Okay, then I head back for the group. Uh, what are you all doing while Stan takes off? We want to do a short rest, maybe let you roll some hit dice? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. I can roll as many hit dice as I want, right? In a short rest? Yeah, you just got to you just got to say it before you roll them all. But yeah. Um, I'm going to do 3 hit dice then. Yeah. And with Song of Rest an extra d6. Okay. Great. Thanks Song of Rest. 10 hit points. Oh no. Jesus, I can't remember the last time I rolled this badly yeah. in something. I mean, that's not bad. What were you rolling? 3d4s? Yeah. I was just flipping a coin over and over again. <laughs> It's so, okay. Now I'm only down 16, which is still over half of my health. Uh, was anyone else doing anything in particular while Stan was gone? I don't think I was doing much. I think I was just waiting for Stan to come back. Yeah, I think I really want to go look at this door and see what's going on there, but I'm smaller <laughs> than Capo, so I feel like I, I do know that that's probably not a safe idea. Okay. Uh, so about three hours pass, and then Stan returns to your little makeshift camp. Man, if he's gone for three hours, then I'm gonna I'm gonna take another short rest part way through and use up that last hit die. Oh yeah, you got one left. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I get six back off that short rest. Okay. Oh, you made it back. Oh yeah, yeah. There's uh, you know, it's kind of a big wall. I had to be real careful. Oh, I should tell you. Yeah. So, uh, only the one gate. That sucks. Uh, there is a portion of the wall that's closer to the towers. So, uh, you know, I could I could see the big one. So, I mean, if we wanna. Try to skip over a wall. I know where the where the spot is closest, but uh, you know I didn't want to try climbing it or anything without knowing what y'all thought. I think that sounds like our best bet. Yeah, I agree. Hey, bud, you're looking a little better. <laughs> a little bit, yes, but not great. So if we're going for this, then I'm still gonna have to use some of the potions, I guess. What time is it right now? Uh, it's about five o'clock. Okay. If we wait a little bit, we could wait until maybe the sun goes down and see if that helps us stealth a little better. Um, why doesn't somebody roll nature? I'll do it. Twelve. I think that's enough to know that the bulk of the things that you have seen so far have the scent ability. They wouldn't necessarily need to see you. They might be able to smell you. Hmm. I don't know about the sun going down being that much of an advantage. It seems like while most of these creatures we've seen, even if they are true polymorphed, they've got a really good sense of smell. I think if we're going to cause any sort of disruption to that, we're going to have to focus on the scent we're getting off, especially since it could already be tracked by the wolves that have already interacted with us. Yeah, that's a good thought. So, I mean, we can smell a lot of smoke from in there. Is that what we do? Maybe build a little campfire a little further out and and uh, cover ourselves in some ash and, and smoky scent? How do you figure we stop them from seeing our camp smoke? Oh, get pretty far out. That's pretty far. Yeah, hey, I'm, I don't know. I I just thought... No, it's not a bad idea. I was just curious if you... I thought... I was asking genuinely. Like, I thought you might have an idea. I oh. wasn't just trying to take the piss or anything. No, no. Well, then now it's not that great of an idea. No. <laughs> well, I, I can take care of that. I can make a smell like a campfire so they can't track our original scent. Oh, that's but good. like without making a campfire? Yeah, I can just give you the smell. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, let's do that one. How are we planning on... Getting over the wall. The walls weren't that tall, were they? 15 feet. It's not that tall. I've got a rope. It's pretty tall to me. Yeah. Yeah, if you can get over it and then rope us up, that would be great. Yeah. All right, line up. We got an hour. And I will cast Press of Digitation and give everyone a lovely smoky campfire smell. Okay. Mm, that's, that sounds so nice. So this lasts for an hour. Uh, knowing how long it took for him to sneak back to the wall, uh, do you want to cast this now and do it again partway through to, to mask your whole time there or oh yeah definitely i think i'll i'll kind of keep track of this is when i did it this is when we're going to need to reapply um just so nothing can follow us to that point okay uh and i guess along the journey i'll start pounding some potions all right uh so back up to full okay so i'm gonna have you all do a group stealth the difficulty number will be slightly higher but we will only use the result of the top roll for the whole group Okay. Eight. Fifteen. If it makes you feel better, Jake, I have a plus six and I also got eight. Thirteen. All right. With a 15, you are able to follow Astrid through the forest and get back around to the side where Stan was able to see Shine Bright's tower. It's about six o'clock at night at this point, and you can see more and more streams of smoke 
from campfires starting to raise up from inside. All right. So what's the plan here? I just uh, try to loop a rope around something and climb up. I guess. Yeah. All right. Then I will try to do that. My ring of jumping. I can just hop the wall as well. Oh, yeah, that's true. So I don't know what's on the other side. Then, yeah, I think I would try to like loop a rope around something on the wall and climb over. All right. Uh, so this is going to be a athletics to make it over the wall. I love it when you say that. 17. All right. This is a tricky climb. You are just barely able to make it. It seems like these are all, it seems all of these walls are made from sanded planks from tall trees, uh, but you are able to get over. As you crest the top of this wall, you can see off in the distance three towers and two small huts. The first tower has stairs going up to it, and the other two do not have any. They just have bridges going from one to the other. And sitting in front of the steps that go up to the first tower, you see three apes sitting with swords jammed into the ground, and they seem to be rolling dice. Adorable. How wide is this wall at the top? Can I sort of like hang out on the top of it and see if I need to help pull anyone up? Or is it really an up and over situation? It is really an up and over situation. All right, then y'all are on your own, but I left the rope for you. Well, I'll do my best. Uh, so this is an athletics to try to climb this rope. Seven? Yeah, this wall is very slick. Uh, you try to use the rope to climb up and you just can't get enough purchase to make it up, let alone over. All right, well, good luck to the rest of you. Um, I think I live out here now because I can't get over this fucking wall. Maybe if I can get to the top, then I can get the rope all the way over and we can pull you from the other side. But that means I have to try to get up there first. Yeah, okay. Are you trying that? Or, I mean, do you want me to try it first? Or I got a little more weight to me if one of you wants to hang on and I make it over. I'll try to climb first and we'll see what happens. Okay. Give me an athletics check. <laughs> Hit me with that number. I rolled a two and I have a negative one. So <laughs> not great. Yeah, I think you walk up to the wall and you like, preparing yourself to do this and you grab a hold of the rope and it's just it's it's a little slippery you you can tell that capo was having a little a little struggle uh, and it seems that his hands got a little sweaty and so the rope uh, is, a, is a little damp okay so i think i look at them uh which one of you wants to try something elaborate i don't think i do but tell me well i think i can jump this i just uh figure one of you could ride piggyback well, you're you're smaller, so. Well, if push comes to shove, I can teleport up there. So. Oh. I'll stay behind. Yeah, carry me. Da da. Right. I'll get him on my shoulder, activate the ring, and hit height. All right. So uh, for this, as opposed to the long jump, you're up and down. Uh, what is your strength modifier? Plus one. Okay, so that gets you to four feet, which is ridiculous to begin with. <laughs> uh, so you can jump twelve feet straight up. But you are tall enough that you can give me an athletics check to try and grab a hold of the top of the wall when you reach the top. Okay. 17. Yeah. Even with the added weight of Capo, you are able to grab a hold of the top and pull yourselves over. Land on the ground next to patients. Hey, that went all right. All right. What about uh, Astrid? Well, she said that worst case, she could teleport, so... Oh, fancy. I don't know if we... I don't know. We can knock on the wall and like try and signal. I uh, can throw another rope to the top. I, I Look, if I had a good idea, I would have used it. So Yeah, here, let me just try this first, and I'll um, tie a little loop in my rope and huck it over, since it's like 50 feet, I figure. Yeah. There's just enough. Yeah, so on the other side of the wall, a uh, rope comes tumbling over with a loop knotted into it. Oh, thank goodness. I, I grab onto it and hold on. Okay. And I, I, give, it, I give it two tugs. I pull. All right, uh, give me an athletics check just to make sure. 22. You get trebuchet to the top of the tower. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all right, you are able to pull Astrid over the wall, and you are all reunited inside of Noak's encampment.
The Crit Show is a Crit Show Studios production, edited and produced by Brandon Wentz with music by Jake Purley. You can find more information about us at thecritshowpodcast.com. To keep up to date with upcoming live shows, contests, and other special events, follow us at The Crit Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For even more weekly content, join us at patreon.com slash thecritshow.